What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Shark Bites. We've got a slightly different episode for you all today. I know there's quite a lot of you out there that are fans of prehistoric sharks. So today I thought I'd treat you to a paleo episode. Admittedly, I'm not a specialist in prehistoric sharks, but they are really cool and I do quite like featuring them every now and again. None more so than Tychodus. Tychodus has been somewhat of an enigma to paleontologists for a long, long time. Ever since the first fossils were discovered in the mid 1700s, scientists have been trying to piece together information about this prehistoric shark. Essentially, they've been trying for over 250 years, which is a pretty long time to try and work it out. Fair play to the paleontologists who stuck it out. But in recent years, these intrepid scientists have finally started to piece together the puzzle of Tychodus. They've figured out how big it was, where it sits in the shark family tree, what it ate, and importantly, why it went extinct. First up though, let's rewind all the way back to 1752. The English were rioting, thinking they'd lost 11 days of their lives when the government changed the yearly calendar. Google that, by the way, it's absolutely nuts. Over in America, Benjamin Franklin was about to fly a kite and figure out that lightning was actually electricity, and a very strange fossilized tooth started cropping up in different places around the world. At the time, these fossilized teeth were mostly being found in Germany and England, but they would later start cropping up all around the world, including America, India, and Japan. Back then, those that were investigating the teeth believed them to be the remains of pallets of fish, namely porcupine fish. Because of their odd shape and appearance, you can't really blame them for thinking they were from the roof of fish mouths. It's those lines and grooves. If you feel the roof of your own mouth, it's somewhat similar. But it wouldn't be for another nearly 100 years that these fossils would be officially scientifically classified. And in 1835, Swiss-American biologist and geologist Louis Agassiz decided to name them Tychodus, coming from the Greek definition and literally translating to folded teeth, which based on what some of these fossilized teeth look like, I personally think is a pretty apt name. Agassiz recognized that these teeth looked fairly similar to the teeth of some elasmorank species, including certain ray species, and so he believed them to be some form of prehistoric shark, as opposed to porcupine fish pallets. More and more teeth would go on to be discovered by geologists and paleontologists all around the world, and the genus grew to over 20 different species, with the teeth from each species all showing slight variations. Because these teeth were cropping up all around the world, it does suggest that whatever they came from had a global distribution. Based on the rocks and marine sediment that they were being found in, it was determined that Tychodus was most likely mooching around during the late Cretaceous period, somewhere around 105 to 75 million years ago. And importantly here, lots of the fossilized teeth were being found in Kansas. If you were to head to Kansas in the American Midwest, you'd come across a pretty impressive rock formation known as Monument Rocks. These large large chalk formations, some reaching 50 foot high, are rich in fossils, of which provide us clues as to what once covered these American plains. Many of the fossils you'll find at Monument Rocks are fossils of ancient sea creatures. Shells of oysters are a common find, but you might also find Tychodus teeth here as well. And the reason you'd find ancient sea creature fossils here is because once upon a time, this part of America was covered by a sea. Historically, it was known as the Western Interior Seaway, splitting the North American continent in two and connecting the Arctic and South Atlantic Ocean. This shallow sea was inhabited by a whole host of pre historic badasses like mosasaurs, ancient sharks, ammonites, and of course, Tychodus. But with teeth like these, what was Tychodus doing there? And how was it able to survive and compete with a whole host of other terrifying sea creatures? Well, these teeth, based on their shape, were undoubtedly adapted for crushing. Scientists initially mused that they were likely feeding on small benthic prey like bivalves or crustaceans living in and around the bottom, and it used its teeth to crush up their shells with ease. Because sharks and rays have cartilaginous skeletons, most of their body doesn't fossilize, and often we only get left with a few teeth or maybe a vertebrae here or there. Occasionally though, we do get more. As time went on, more complete fossils of the Tychodus teeth and their jaws were starting to be found, showing that the teeth actually formed large crushing plates in their mouths. It was discovered that the Tychodus jaw contained a lot of these teeth, around 260 on the upper jaw and 220 on the lower jaw. As well as this, how these teeth were arranged in the mouth of Tychodus was a little bit different to what the scientists were expecting. Unlike the modern day rays, whose crushing plates are quite broad and wide in their mouths, 
Tychicus's teeth were elongated in its jaw from front to back, and the teeth in that jaw actually interlocked together, which would have made grasping prey species a lot easier. Because of these findings, the scientists concluded that Tychicus likely didn't just feed on only benthic animals, but also preyed on larger pelagic species that had hard shells. Ancient sea turtles and our good old prehistoric pal the Ammonite were likely on the menu for at least some species of Tychicus. I say some species there because there are quite a few different species of this guy, so it's likely some of them fed on some things and not others. And they also probably varied between being generalist predators and specialist predators across those different species as well. So we knew they had teeth adapted for crushing hard-shelled organisms. We knew they had a global distribution, but what did they actually look like? Well, as I mentioned earlier, because Tychidus was a shark, it had a skeleton made of cartilage. So its body shape and its exact size was pretty unknown because we just didn't have the fossils to prove it. Over the years, some scientists thought that they might be raised because of those teeth, but others thought that they might be relatives of the hybodonts because their teeth were somewhat similar to hybodonts and also because they'd found fossils of an intermediate species between hybodonts and Tychidus. But very recently, some paleontologists working in Mexico hit the jackpot. Romain Vullo and his team unearthed six Tychidus fossils in quarries found in Northeast Mexico. Two of the specimens were partial remains, three were almost complete, and one of them was a fully intact specimen. And when I say fully intact, I mean fully intact at least in paleontology terms anyway. <laughs> the complete specimen contained almost all of its skeletal elements, its teeth and jaw, preserved muscle remains, and a body outline with the positioning of all its fins. This right here is a paleontologist's gold mine. What a find. They were perfectly preserved because of the type of sediment that they were found in, namely pinkish platy limestone and marl limestone, basically a soft lime mud. And because the area where these individuals died would have been relatively quiet, with little to no scavengers coming to pick them apart. This unbelievable find allowed the scientists to answer centuries old questions about this shark. It was concluded that Tychidus was a type of mackerel shark, the group of sharks that includes modern day behemoths like the Great White and Paul Beagle shark. Based on its body shape, proportions and fin positioning, as well as a thick vertebral column, it was thought to be a fast swimming shark that likely hunted prey in the pelagic open ocean. Paired with those shell crushing teeth, this Tychidus species almost undoubtedly fed on ammonites and ancient sea turtles, as opposed to benthic critters on the sea floor. Using its powerful body and fusiform shape, it likely hunted down its prey species at high speed Speeds, somewhat similar to a modern day poor beagle shark. The scientists even found cracked ammonite shells in the same quarries where they found the Tychidus specimens, almost like it left a trail of breadcrumbs to what it was eating. The immaculate fossils also settled the debate about its size. For years, scientists and paleontologists alike speculated on how big these prehistoric sharks were. Different Tychidus species were suggested to range somewhere between 2 meters and 14 meters long, which is a massive range. You can sort of forgive them for that range, I suppose, because because they were working from incomplete specimens and in some cases just the teeth. These fossils found in Mexico though suggest for this species anyway that it had a maximum size of 9.7 meters. That would definitely make it the largest shark ever to live on a diet consisting of solely hard shelled organisms. I should obviously point out here though that because there are lots of different species of Tychidus they likely did range in their size quite a bit. But at least for this one based on the proportions and ratios of its body it probably got to just shy of 10 meters which, to be fair, is still massive. The presence of a juvenile Tychidus species within these fossils also gave the scientists clues as to its size. The juvenile fossil was found to be just over 56 centimeters in length, which is pretty large for a baby shark. But that size is somewhat consistent to the birth sizes for larger modern day sharks like tiger sharks, great whites and great hammerheads. And this also gives us clues as to what kind of life histories Tychidus had, likely being a K-selected species who matured late and invested a lot of resources into producing a few well-developed offspring. Now, because we knew that at least this Tychidus species anyway was feeding on ammonites and ancient sea turtles, we now know why it might have gone extinct. And it likely all comes down to competition for resources. Back during that period, there were likely lots of other predatory marine species that were feeding on hard-shelled organisms. Tychidus would have been in direct competition with some mosasaur species who also had crushing teeth for hunting shelled prey. That paired with their potential enormous size 
size would have meant that Tychidas had to eat a lot of prey. And perhaps those Mosasaur species were simply better at catching that prey, resulting in Tychidas' eventual demise. I suppose it kind of gives us a gentle reminder as to what happens to apex predators when resources start to dwindle, and then they start being outcompeted for those dwindling resources. Perhaps somewhat similar to us humans and today's large marine apex predators. All in all, this is a magnificent find from these scientists, and they really have put together some large pieces of the puzzle here. And it's those puzzle pieces that have revealed so much about this species that previously we just had to guess at. It's quite exciting to think that similar immaculate fossils could be found in the future for different prehistoric shark species that just completely fills in knowledge gaps. All you got to do is just do a bit of digging, literally. So there we go, guys. That's your latest prehistoric shark dump. What an awesome shark species Tychidus was. I absolutely loved reading about it. If you enjoyed this video, please, please do give it a like and don't forget to hit that subscribe button below if you haven't already. Please do let me know in the comments if you want to see some more prehistoric shark episodes here on Shark Bites. If I can see there's lots of people commenting wanting more on this, then I'm going to do it. So let me know. Before we head off, though, if you enjoyed this video about sharks from the past, you might quite like this one right here. Okay, it's not quite prehistoric sharks, but in this video, we have a look at how sharks have been depicted throughout human history. From them being mythical sea monsters in the time of the ancient Greeks, all the way up to some of the weird ass drawings we got in the 1500s. This video has got it all, so make sure you check it out.